Monday Night Chat with Wong Chen. Brought to you by the Member of Parliament for Kalanajaya in collaboration with Invo. Okay, Q&A this week. Now, we have three questions. Uh, the first question is on whether the EPF is a Ponzi scheme. The short answer, no. <laughs> I think EPF is reasonably well run. Uh, under the current management, I have a lot of respect for uh, Datuk Sharil, I think. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's quite a decent fellow. He looks like his maths uh, actually gel. Uh, the only thing is, let me just explain why, in my opinion, the EPF is able to pay 4 to 6% uh, returns every year. It's quite simple. EPF would have bought in the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s uh, into the Malaysian stocks. Yeah? So equities in uh, Maybank, Public Bank, Tanaga, all the big, big, big uh, blue chip stocks. Right? Uh, so they would have bought this. And you can imagine if Public Bank was a dollar in 1970, today it's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't own any public shares, but I'm sure it's like 10, 15 bucks. So that would have gone back a return of 15 times for, say, uh, EPF. So what EPF does is every year, in order to pay the dividend, they must actually sell down those shares or sell property or assets. And they, they've been controlling the sale of these things uh, enough for us to pay a six, uh, 4 to 6 percent dividend to hedge against basically inflation and just a little bit more for the savings. Yeah? So uh, the big challenge for EPF going forward is those good old days, the roaring 70s, 80s, 90s does not exist anymore. Yeah? We're now in the, in the stagnation 2000s. So EPF is under pressure to go overseas, to look for better quality assets, uh, to look at London property, hoping to get 8-10% yield, or to invest in high-tech companies, hoping to score big on a 25% return. Yeah? So that is, uh, that is the pressure they will feel, and I, I wish EPF all the best, but it is definitely not a Ponzi scheme. Now the second question is from uh, Inche Hadi, uh, who asked, uh, why are foreigners who come as workers now operate and own businesses in Klang Valley. Well, if you see a foreigner like an Indonesian or a, or a Bangladeshi, and they run sundry shops or they run uh, some business or restaurants, uh, we cannot just assume that they are illegal workers. Yeah? But if they are workers, they're supposed to be working in the, in the companies that brought them in. They're not supposed to do private activities. Yeah? So it's a very simple answer to you. Um, if you suspect something is wrong or amiss, uh, then you can file a report to the local authorities and see what happens from there. But it is not a crime for a Bangladeshi man uh, to open up a shop. Yeah? It is not a crime for a Bangladeshi man to open a shop. It is a problem if he is actually brought in as a worker. Yeah? And it is also a problem if he is in the country illegally. Okay? Now the last question is on the, audit, the new Auditor General's appointment, Madina. Tan Sri Madina. Uh, what are my views? Um, well, her husband is a big supporter of Najib. Uh, but I don't think it is very fair to uh, assess her based on that. In the same token, if say we have a very senior civil servant, a director general, and her husband is a big supporter of Anwar Ibrahim, is it fair for the federal government to prosecute or persecute the uh, director general? Obviously not. So, the question then boils down to what, how do we judge a person? We judge a person by the quality of the work that person does, right? So as the new Auditor General, does she bring a wealth of experience? I've checked her CV. She was in a few ministries uh, and she is a long career, uh, career civil servant. The same with Ambrim Guan. Ambrim Guan wasn't like in the finance department or anything in particular. He's just a long, long uh, serving civil servant. So between Ambrim Buang and also Madina, they're about the same. Yeah, so then how do we really judge a person? We judge the person by the quality of the work the person produces. So I look forward to seeing the first set of auditor, audited uh, reports uh, coming out from her office and then I will make a final call on the quality of this person, the new AG. Yeah? But most important for me and, uh, is that her reports must give an estimate, a good estimate of what is the wastage and corruption losses in Malaysian government every year. Amrim Bong did not do it. In fact, some of the Amrim Bong's uh, reports actually don't even quantify the, the, the losses uh, in very specific terms. Yeah? So I wish her the best, but I really want to see quality reports coming out. And I will make a final judgment on the quality based on the reports 
not based on her, her, her husband's position. Okay, so that's it for Q&A. Welcome back to Policy Monday. Uh, this week, we're quite excited. We have a simple question to answer. Can we afford to give free public education at our public universities, vocational training centers, polytechnics, and community colleges? A simple question, uh, but you know, someone has to do the numbers. So we're going to do the numbers today on this question. Now, a lot of political parties, including Pakta and Harapan, uh, we have talked about giving, it, giving free education, free public education. We get a lot of detractors that say, yeah, you guys are mad, you can't afford it, so and so forth. Well, today I hope to bury the matter once and for all by giving you the data. Okay? Let's start with, by asking a simple question, how much will it cost? Now, the numbers that we get is this. First, there are about 500,000 500, students at our public universities. We've got 20 public universities. Okay? We have also about 400,000 students in community colleges, vocational training and polytechnics. Okay? Out of this 400,000, most of them are doing part-time. About 300,000 are doing part-time, 100,000 are actually enrolled in a full-time uh, diploma. Okay? So that total amount that we're targeting is 900,000 people. Okay, give and take, 900,000 people. So how much does it cost to give tuition, admin fees, and also some basic accommodation for people who are not from the, the, the locality, right? We looked at the 20 public universities, did the mean test for all of them, and we came out with the magic number, $3,650 per year for tuition and non-tuition aspects. It doesn't consider... Uh, so much food and travel. Yeah? That we hope that the students will pay themselves. So based on this number, 3650 per year for universities, public universities, and 1400 per year for polytechnics, community, community colleges, and also uh, uh, vocational training. The grand number comes out to 1.8 billion for public university and 0 0.5 billion for vocational community colleges and polytechnics. So that's a grand total of 2.4 billion to pay for free education. Yeah? It's not 25 billion, it's not 50 billion, it's not that kind of problem. It's actually a 2.4 billion problem. How do you pay for 2.4 billion? It's very simple. We argued all the time that just tightening processes in government spending will save a lot of money. Yeah? Let's look at the higher education budget. For 2016, they had a budget allocation of $13.38 billion. Okay? What we do is we apply the formula that my office and now developed, which is roughly 15.5% of all government operating expenses minus emoluments and pension plus all developments, developmental spending plus grants all those are subject to corruption. So about 15.5% is the corruption wastage rate. That means on a budget of 13.38 billion, we could save, if we run a good system, 1.9 billion from wastage and corruption. Yeah? So remember, our problem was a 2.4 billion question. If you could save 1.9 billion, your, your balance is basically, you have to find 500 million to pay for this. So the actual cost of getting free public education, if we implement a strong regimen that eliminates corruption and wastage, is a mere 500 million a year. Okay? If when you compare with the whole PTPTN system, I mean, it becomes a joke. Because for PTPTN, every year we spend on average about 3 to 4 to 5 billion a year, averaging 4.2 billion a year on PTPTN loans. And these loans need to be repaid back. But the fact that this loan's repayment is a mere 14% repayment rate is as good as giving it free to the people. Yeah? So you imagine, we need 500,000, 500 million, yeah, sorry, 500 million to give free education. On the other hand, we've got 4.2 billion average of PTPTN loan every year that they don't even collect back. So the argument on whether we can provide free education or not is clearly over. We can do it. All we need is political will and the will to stamp out corruption and wastage in government. That's it for Policy Monday this week. Hi everybody, it has been a busy week here in Klana Jaya, so let's waste no time and get straight to it. 
Uh, that's because Tanya asked me too. <laughs> okay, on Thursday, we had our first phone banking session in a really long while. I'm really excited about this. Uh, this phone banking session is with Invoke and the purpose of this is to call polling and counting agents for the coming elections. So if you would be interested in this, just keep on checking out our Facebook page for more updates. It was fun to have our volunteers back hard at work again and a special shout out to each and every one of you, Molly, Dorin, Caroline, Angela, Safong. Yes, I know you watch Monday Night Chat, that's why I'm naming you all out. Eh? Thank you so much for coming along. Uh, I know some of you cannot make it this Thursday, but we really look forward to seeing you next week again. If you want to join us, just let us know. Okay, on Friday, we said goodbye to four amazing interns, okay? These interns already have this problem, you know, they'll steal my heart and then they'll break it the moment they want to leave, okay? Why can't they stay longer? Anyway, um, these four interns are Sean, Melissa, Megan and Joel. We want to thank you for your immense contribution to the office. It's been an honour working with such amazing, dedicated and talented individuals like yourselves. Thank you so much for that. Okay, next on the list. Boss attended two CNY celebrations. See, I told you there was a lot going on in Granadaria. Boss attended two CNY celebrations, one in KRT, uh, one with the KRT Sanwi Mantari and the other with KRT SS 8 Stroke 8. He mentioned how he enjoyed the food and the company of the residents. Um, he also attended the Gotong Royong in PGS 6A. Apparently, he said that there was a really good turnout and it was heartwarming to see residents actually taking the time to contribute to their own community. So thank you so much for that. Congratulations, organizers, on a job well done. Okay, this is really interesting. Um, during the weekend, there was a mass wedding that took place in Masjid Al-Islamia, Kampung Lindungan, where nine married couples got married. Imagine that. Um, boss mentioned how this is actually a really good idea and he would recommend it to religious um, institutions that uh, are, are conducting their services or whatnot in poorer regions because this is more cost effective. So to help them out, do try to conduct something like this. We want to thank Usta Zul for this amazing idea. Thank you so much. You are a brilliant, brilliant man. Um, okay, and finally, the biggest event that took place during the weekend was the MPSJ award ceremony where um, MPSJ took the time to celebrate each and every, um, uh, what do you call that, MPSJ counsellor as well as their JKP zones. I, I thought that was an amazing thing to have because it would just encourage them to go beyond their means to just keep performing for the community. Um, it was a blast having able to mingle and celebrate with our constituents. You will see pictures as I talk about this. Um, it was really, really fun. And I just want to congratulate all our winners again. Good job, guys. You know, And I hope that you really keep up the good work because without you, man, God knows what will happen to our community. Anyway. But thank you so much, guys, for your contribution and for your really, really good performance. Okay, so that's all I have for Clara Jai. told you it's been a busy week. Let's hope next week I'll have shorter things to talk about right hopefully but hey it doesn't matter i love talking to you guys have an amazing week everybody take care good night